What's today? I? What's today, my fine fellow? Today? Why is Christmas Day? It's Christmas Day. It would have been a great gritty reboot if Cratchit beat him to death with the fire poker, mean. which is what he pulls out because he's scared of him. Like his commitment to being the worst version of himself so that he can reveal that he's going to just give him a raise is great. I know. <laughs> Welcome to 1999 the podcast. I am the ghost of Christmas past. No, I'm 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 John Brooks. And I am still Jen Tisdale despite all my best efforts. <laughs> it's me. It's a perfect it's a perfect thing to be. Thank you very much. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. It's just me and Ashley Tisdale's actual sister mm-hmm. vying to be the top Jen Tisdale <laughs> in our field. Mm-hmm. 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 And uh, all I'm doing for her is uh, someone stole a picture of my foot off my Instagram page and put it on her wiki feet page. And now she's getting all my foot clout. That is that true? Said, that is really true. I, disco- is true. I discovered this one day. You, you were, we were talking about vanity earlier and I was like, what if I have a wiki feet page? Because you know, when you're just like, you're not, you're not famous at all, but you want to be. So it's, you're really low bar it. Like what if I had a wiki feet page is my, we, life. we, for, for the various shows we toured live last year and, Jamie Loftus was with us, and Jamie boasts a five uh, on Wikifeet, the w- yeah. Wikifeet scale. And yeah, so exactly. she would like make a, sh- she would like jokingly, but I think like a little serious, make a show of making her feet visible while on stage. <laughs> you have to. You have, you have to. to. So I'm just over here Satisfy getting, your fans. getting her all of her points, her <laughs> at midnight <laughs> points. Well, playing playing the role of the ghost of Jacob Marley today uh, is Alex Steed. Hi, Alex. Oh, hello. And, How are you? And Merry Christmas. It's Christmas, everybody. Today Thank- is Christmas Day. Thanks for having me back for a TNT movie. That's like... <laughs> it was a like, Hallmark. You you shut your mouth. <laughs> really? Oh, it was TNT. TNT. Oh, TNT. But it was a Hallmark production. That makes sense. True. It really like it really brought me to a special place to mm-hmm. to see a movie produced specifically with with Hallmark apparently for TNT. That was great. It is among the better TNT movies, but we'll 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 talk about that um, momentarily. Uh, so today is Christmas Day, and so we are in the Christmas spirit, all of us, as you can tell. Um, if 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 we're not talking about the weird thing that happened recently that is a major global event it's because it hasn't happened yet so sorry uh, <laughs> we don't know about it i'm sure it's that's great. <laughs> it's, it's, that's what i'm always afraid of for recording things early these days is like it's like what if something happens in five days where people are like why aren't they talking about the fact that you know aliens invaded or something like that but um because that didn't happen in 1999. <laughs> yes. And that's, that's where true. we live spiritually and emotionally. That's, so. <laughs> that's true. Well, we're okay. We're recording a bit early, but we have our, our mold wine and our hot cocoa and our, you know, ale, whatever the hell else. <laughs> our mince pies and plum pudding and all the other good stuff that everybody still eats uh, <laughs> at Christmas time. And we are going to talk today about... A Christmas Carol, and specifically one particular version of a Christmas Carol, the Christmas Carol that came out in 1989 on, as Alex pointed out, TNT. On December the 5th of 1999 on TNT, uh, to be exact, directed by pr- prolific television and stage director David Hugh Jones, who directed a couple of features, most notably 1989's Vietnam vet drama Jackknife, starring Robert De Niro Ed Harris and Kathy Baker, a movie I have not seen, but I've never like heard of it. People. Never. Never heard of it. Yeah. No. Um, wow. I have heard of it, but I had no idea what it was about or who was in it. Um, but yeah, it looks good. I have to check that out sometime. Uh, when we when we transition to 1989, the podcast. <laughs> when we just, when it's <laughs> we'll Taylor out, Swift all we'll day, every day. Jackknife. Uh, it stars Patrick Stewart as Scrooge, Richard E. Grant as the best Bob Cratchit ever, Joel Gray as the ghost of Christmas past, Dominic West as Fred, and in other supporting roles, Ian McNeese, Breaking Bad's Laura Fraser, and Downton Abbey and Ted Lasso fan favorite Jeremy Swift along with a whole bunch of other really great actors. 
It was adapted for television by renowned playwright Peter Barnes, fresh off the success of 1998's two-part television epic Merlin, starring Sam Neill, Isabella Rossellini, Amanda Richardson, and Helena Bonham Carter, a movie that apparently both... Uh, Jennifer and Alex are just we have feelings about it. <laughs> John, I, li- I live at the Maryland Renaissance Festival. Please don't ask yeah. if I if I have a connection to Merlin. <laughs> I love that adaptation. I'm, I'm big yeah, fan it's of great. It. Yes, yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, the film was inspired by Stewart's desire to return to the stage in the 1990s amidst his busy Star Trek filming schedule, which forced him to pass up on some iconic roles and drove him to take matters into his own hands. In the early 90s, he adapted A Christmas <laughs> Carol. Take matters into his own. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in Christmas Carol. <laughs> he kind of did. It's in the very early dramatic. Da- this is really what happened. In the early 90s, he adapted A Christmas Carol as a one-man show, echoing Dickens' own performance of the story, and Stewart played played all the 40 plus characters no this allowed, yeah don't don't <laughs> real we don't have to do that this allowed Stewart the freedom of not having to work on his own uh not, not having to work on somebody else's schedule and over the course of the 90s he performed the play on broadway and the west end earning him a number of awards along the way including the olivier award in 1994 so what better way to cap off a decade of A Christmas Carol than a film adaptation in which Stewart gets to dig in to the story's protagonist, Ebenezer Scrooge. Critics' reviews for A Christmas Carol are few and far between, but Variety's Michael Spear loved it, writing, quote, only Ebenezer Scrooge would knock TNT's A Christmas Carol. Handsome, wholesome, wholesome, and finely tuned, the cable take on Charles Dickens' masterwork is TV at its classiest. Treated to Hallmark touches at every turn and Patrick Stewart's graceful performance, viewers who aren't yet in the holiday spirit will be ready for the tinsel and mistletoe as soon as the opening credits roll. Bah humbug. On on the funeral? On the funeral? (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Uh, you guys are well, ready for Christmas. Maybe he doesn't quite remember the beginning of it, but it's we'll go that past. Uh, in the New York Times, Karen James wrote, quote, A Christmas Carol has been so candied over the years, starring everyone from Bill Mar- Murray to Scrooge McDuck, that in the popular imagination, it's lost the dark vision of poverty that inspired Dickens' tale. But redemption as extreme as Scrooge's has to come from the bitter depths of misanthropy. TNT's lively new film restores the hard- hard-heartedness of the pre-reformed Scrooge while retaining the delight he later finds in joining the human race. With a vivid texture of 19th century Christmas festivities full of songs, dances, and bowls of punch you can almost taste, and with Patrick Stewart as Scrooge, whose transformation makes sense, this is a glorious Christmas carol. And finally, Belinda Acosta in the Austin Chronicle concluded, while other versions of the Dickens tale tend to brighten it with bouncy musical numbers or well-scrubbed depictions of poverty, the TNT production offers a more thoughtful approach to the story. Instead of focusing on Scrooge's skinfinity, uh, skin, skin, sorry, skin flinty attitude. I was like, skin finity. We are skin a- flinty attitude, which is a weird. It's starting word. to look a little Buffalo Bill around here with all this <laughs> skin chatter. Words. So sorry. Uh, toward all, all creatures dead and living, this version, written by Peter Barnes, takes a more direct approach in explaining how and why Scrooge has mortared his heart and how, when presented with the opportunity, he chooses to change the course of his life and, more importantly, make a difference in the lives of those around him. And finally, in the years since, it's gone on to take its place in the upper echelons of all-time Christmas Carol adaptations, including coming in at number 11 of 24 on Collider's List, number 5 in Screen Rants, uh, uh, which I should note bafflingly includes the Muppet Christmas Carol at number 1, somehow. Uh, number 4 in both... Wow, I know. wow, wow. I know. Number four in both <laughs> Game Rant and The Rap, which both correctly identifies the 1951 adaptation, sometimes also known as Scrooge with Alistair Sim, yeah. a version that is very much the spiritual ancestor to this one as number one. Yeah. So there you have it. All right, let's talk about it. Um, this it was directly inspired by well. that version, that 1951 version, which is very good. I uh, love it. I, for like a quick minute, was bummed that... So I watched this on YouTube, which is where I watch yeah. most things if I have to watch them and don't know where to steal them from. And um, uh, I and on YouTube, it was like, Patrick Stewart, parentheses, X-Men. And I understand that that's the thing that you have to do. But no. then I was like, then I remembered that he... The only other thing I've seen him and Richard E. Grant in together was Logan. So oh, it was yeah. like, oh, really right. nice... <laughs> It was like nice to see him together again 
in another dour film. <laughs> if only Patrick Stewart had been in Bram Stoker's Dracula, we could have had a, another crossover. And yet. That would have been yeah. great. I, don't, you, I, love, yeah. I love this. This is do, great. Before we, before we get into it, do you guys remember what you were doing in Christmas of 1999 or even oh, any? I'm not great with memories, but I actually have very vivid memory of this one and i of 99 because this is when i was i was worrying about y2k (laughs) like only seven days left. you were listening to people uh take apart prince's 1999 and be like it's not actually about that if that i was listening to lip biscuit no i'm kidding if it was the 90 yes if it was we were waiting for that Mm -hmm. i was with i was at a party with this guy casey johnson who unfortunately just died last week and that's all right. You didn't do it. And I, and I know that I bought, um, I know that I bought a box set, a Pink Floyd box set. Oh, shit. And then, that is I a, know, that is a sad, that you were like, I got to get into it now. I, I bought myself that for Christmas, uh, on 99. And then we watched, we did the dark side of the moon thing going into, uh, uh New Year's. Like, I think so. It was like the, a couple of days after Christmas. Yeah. That's what, that's all I remember. Mm-hmm. I wasn't watching this live. I do know that. No. What were you doing, Jen Tisdale? Was it live? Do you think? Okay, so I mean, I wasn't. I didn't watch like the <laughs> premiere of. I mean, because I'm like, because now, <laughs> as it should be, a la Scrooge. Not around when children. are they gonna? I mean, obviously, Mary Lou Renton's busy right Not now. around the um, TNT, denying mm-hmm. abuse in the gymnast world, but like she could still come back. Right? But um, <laughs> doing anything. Uh, I was actually, I had just met, I've talked about this on Twitter before. It's very 1999 thing. I was in college before I left college. <laughs> just, I foolishly decided I was better than it. And um, because I had met this guy in a band called the Bloodhound Gang. And they were on <laughs> Oh, tour. that's the story. This okay. is like one of the primary things I know. <laughs> I, yeah. I, which is so embarrassing because I have other fun facts. But that and the Matt Walsh thing are like the two the things that you remind me of once a month. Yeah. That's that another I, big I, one. That I, that I did. God, I know. What a mm. fucking resume. Um, yeah. I should bury it. Not in the Pet cemetery, of course. <laughs> yeah. I had just like got visited him in los angeles for my oh wow, wow. so was that Christmas break. that was that must have been one fierce beer coaster time no it was hooray for boobies oh wow so it was like big time they were big time oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's sure. what you were doing when patrick stewart was making his way back to the stage via tnt yeah i was engaging <laughs> with something else <laughs> you were uh an absolute loser. I'm a- <laughs> <laughs> I was stating an absolute loser. I almost did the Ace Ventura. Sad. Uh, and uh, but I've since moved on to a great person who is listening to this. Hi. <laughs> they are not in um, a novelty band from the late. No, he he is a brilliant scientist. <laughs> not yet. That's great. Yet. I know. <laughs> who knows you know. what happened? You only live once. And John, um, you do not. You were you were literally just gripped with Y two K fear. Were you in a bunker? I don't, like I, I genuinely, I so I don't remember specifically Christmas of ninety nine. Um, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't, like I don't remember anything about specifically like the the Christmas part of it. The New Year's part I remember quite well. Um, because you know we're all talking about the new millennium, Y two K. I believe it was the millennium. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I was dating someone I didn't like very much. I remember that. Ditto. Um, Ditto. Yeah. We'll I mean, we were all in our. I don't know how old you are, Alex, but I sense we're close to the same age. So we were at that. Yeah. We were at the right age to date the, some of the worst people that will ever cross our path. I remember. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was she wasn't a bad person. It she just like was not. I just didn't like her. It was you know what I mean. Like it was just we were just yeah. not the right personalities. Yes jive in okay i did not mean to derail us i just figured since this is like a i, I don't think i could ask this for most, most of our other movies because it's like this was out in july who the fuck remembers no july? it's I've funny because I, I remember like almost everything else about the year just not christmas it's like it's the one like i really think it was overshadowed by by you know the millennial new year's oh for just, sure I, it's it's not you know that's not what sticks yes. out to me um they were like you're gonna remember i, I don't remember at all because i go to bed it's at nine apocalyptic yeah. <laughs> I just I do remember dancing around to Prince's 1999 on New Year's Eve and then everyone finally breaking the lyrics down and going oh it's not actually about this one <laughs> we were incorrect I just I remember somebody had just bought the new Limp Biscuit album uh, and was playing it at the party I was at and well like, you have okay. to break some shit tonight yeah it's yes. a directive okay sorry we're back back into the movie 
Um, I did. I was not. I will say, I was not watching this edition of A Christmas Carol. That Missed year. it. It was. But I, when it started to play, I was like, I have seen this. I couldn't tell you when or how or. Yeah. I, I couldn't, but it felt very familiar to me. Or what was very familiar to me was just this production and what made for TV movies used to be like, because they're very yes. tongue in cheek nowadays, sort of, I guess. And they've actually just switched to things like Netflix. It's hard to say what a made for TV movie is anymore, but it just felt like, oh, this was a play on television as Patrick Stewart intended psychotically. 100%. And he 100%. nailed it. And I was like, ooh, yeah. if, if they had a commercial break, I would have been right at home. <laughs> it does feel... Like one of the things I both love about it, but also I think that kind of limits it is that it does very much feel like you're watching a play. Like it does feel like it's being staged and it has that sort of like, you know, Broadway, West End kind of kind of feel to it. Um, Do you and- guys, did you guys remember A Christmas Carol? Because I've seen so many versions of it yeah. that I'm not super clear on what the actual source material has and what is people are people taking liberties so when 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 in the opening scene patrick stewart's out of going to a funeral and in my mind i was like oh is this like did he lose like a lady cat because he was so distraught and when it was his business partner i went whoa wait okay <laughs> i mean i knew i didn't know that they showed us that i thought we opened up with him already being an asshole with marley dad and i didn't remember starting yeah this. i don't have i'm not cultured so I don't have <laughs> oh, Charles like Dickens. any source. Well, like, I didn't have any. I like if you were like, this is how it was originally. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kept, I kept, I kept going back to Scrooged Bill Murray in my head, yeah, and, yeah. Like, and comparing it and being like, oh, I get that now. No, that reference I, makes more sense to me. <laughs> no, I didn't. Like, I felt like because I don't know, I I thought this this was so well done that I if again if you were like this is like word for word source material I'd it sounded like, yeah, like for it sure <laughs> there were a couple of times where my dumb brain was like oh i don't know what that guy just said this is british bar, bar, bar. yeah <laughs> as, as as the person in the room who teaches this to high school students John, uh, they are called tell you that uh so so what that is and this is a it was an invention of this version of it um, and what it is doing is trying to kind of get around a narrative problem with the text. So the text, because the text is narrated by a sort of third person omniscient narrator. Right? Mm. Um, and it begins with Marley's Marley was dead, right? That's like that's the opening line, I think, is Marley was dead. And it has the whole thing with Scrooge kind of considering if uh, dead as a doornail is an appropriate um, I mean, that metaphor. was very funny. I did laugh at that whole yeah. exchange. And that's like directly from the book. That's directly <laughs> from the text. But because you can't like film that, you can't film an omniscient narrator, they invented the funeral scene to sort of play some of those elements in to introduce the death of Marley. Mm. Um, as opposed to heading straight for the counting house, which is how it's usually opened up in most in most adaptations. It's just Scrooge counting money and like yelling at Bob Cratchit. Um, so I thought it was very clever. Like that, that was a way of kind yes. of inventing something to make it more faithful to the text, to bring that sort of, um, you know, inner, inner sort of, uh, mind of Scrooge, uh, to life in, in a way that you couldn't, you couldn't otherwise. So it is both a departure and a departure by way of being, um, faithful to, to the source material. Which, so like, is, is it, is all the text like by, by way, so with the exception of stuff like you're saying that it's presented in the text as third person, but they just needed a way to frame it. Like, are there, are there added scenes or is it like more or less like a faithful adaptation, just using mechanisms to make the adaptation work? So there are two. And the, what I really like about this adaptation, and we'll talk about this a little bit when we get to towards the end of it. But what I really like about it is that the two things that it really expands upon from the text are again, Elements of the text that like work really well on the page, but are very difficult to translate what they mean and the impact they have on the characters, right? Sort of in in presentation. So you have the two bookends. Basically, you have the opening sequence at the funeral, but then the actual redemption of Scrooge and and his sort of um, new life after the hauntings is far more fleshed out 
in this version of the movie than really any other one, but also in, in, in the book. The book, it's only um, a couple pages that talks about, you know, what, what he did thereafter. In this version, it's like 20 minutes and it's, and it's really, really great. We'll, 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 we'll get to that. But I, but I think like, again, it's, it's a way of kind of honoring the spirit of that ending by like not just bulldozing over it the way so many versions of it tend tend to do and giving you more about like this is really about scrooge and not so much a kind of morality play which is what it's often kind of set up as in a lot of the adaptations that um that, I, that you I've mean seen morality play as in for all of us but we're, instead of just watching his <laughs> His yes. Return, right. Yeah. His return to uh, his, these, uh, his these characters. Own yeah, these characters have become so kind of like iconic that it's almost like you lose the characters of them, right? And I think this makes a real attempt to bring back this focusing on like the people um, in in the story. Um, so, Alex, like, what is your experience with a Christmas Carol? How many versions have you seen? Do you have a Do you have one that you and you, you kind of cringe like we did when someone mentioned the Muppets. Oh, I actually, um, I didn't. So my cringe wasn't wasn't at them. It was like worrying on your behalf about saying anything negative about that because people have such <laughs> positive yeah. feelings, and I don't care about it. Honestly, I don't. I don't have a feel. My Muppet movies are like dingy '80s Muppet movies. Yeah, like those yeah. are my. Yeah. that's my shit. Muppets take Muppets Manhattan, take Manhattan. Like that's my shit. Fuck yeah. So mm-hmm. that's like 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 Rizzo and rats uh, skating on butter on a flat top. Top. like that's, yes. my, that's my Muppets so I don't care too much about that although Brett Goldstein loves that movie for some wild reason it's his favorite movie and every whatever everyone tries to get us to have Brett Goldstein I on the show and it. then have him talk about that so I don't care about that I think I think Scrooge is my favorite specifically because well because it's Bill Murray it feels like Ghostbusters a little bit I grew up on Ghostbusters or whatever but the thing that I think that this movie did super well is this is a ghost story. (laughs) Yeah. It's a Christmas movie, but it's like about a man who's haunted by horrifying visions and they need to convey that. And this is the best. um, And Scrooge does that really well with like the practical effects. Like it's really, those are really, it's terrifying imagery. Like he's haunted by a zombie. It's like all this stuff happens. It's, I think it's terrific. It's great. It's Bill Murray. It's like a little weird, but I enjoy it. Um, they say nipples a lot for a, a holiday movie, and I like that. But I um, <laughs> did you? I don't. Like, I, saw I don't. When wanna, I was like seven in the movie theater. <laughs> whenever I, that came out, was I it don't want to like. N- I don't. Uh, I think it was after that. I want to say eighty-seven. I don't want to get lost in the Scrooge of it all, but sure. M- yeah. Much later, after several several viewings, I watched this every year, and there was a time in my life where I would watch it outside of the holiday season. Oh like, yeah. Because I love it so much. But I didn't. It took me several watchings to clock what's written on his on the wall of his closet slash what is it? exercise room, and it's just the def, the literal definition. It says "cross a thing you nail people to." <laughs> That's what it says in big letters when he's like changing his clothes when his brother's weirdly weirdly on this exercise bike in his it's- in his office. I was like, oh my god. It's tremendous. I, yeah, I, I to me, that's like the one for so many reasons, just being of the time, whatever. And and yeah. um, and I think also, you know, I, I feel like I'm like finally old enough to accept things that are not of my immediate pop culture fabric. And so I think that this is this is great for that. But like this is the only one that I've seen that breaks my heart as much as Scrooge does where you see mm. him see himself make the decisions to be frigid and then and then have to kind of live with that and 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 urge himself to like not you know not be an idiot uh and i yeah so this i i really i really enjoyed this but yeah prior my my primary uh christmas girl text was scrooged yeah or some there's some I think there's like a Mickey's Christmas Carol of course that I definitely watched as a child that so those yeah so Scrooge came out I just checked as 88 so I was I was nine we saw that on Christmas Eve um when I when I was nine we used to go see a movie on Christmas Eve every every year so we saw that and like it was that and Mickey's Christmas Carol were, were the two that were sort of my um my benchmarks right when when I, when I was young of like what this what this story was um and then i think like we read a christmas carol 
the text of it in like eighth grade English, maybe? Yes. Yeah, um, I teach same it to here. ninth graders. I don't so remember that. We were reading that, too many sad things, like where the red fern grows. And I was like, ah. Yeah. Stop I killing animals. <laughs> I like fell, I like started to understand um, symbolism in the eighth grade. And I think that was a big deal for me. Yeah. I was like, the I rose ninth bush. Grade. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I think ninth grade was Great Expectations and eighth grade was Christmas Carol. Uh, you you had a nicer school. I mean, I, I, I I, so. I, clearly, we've we've discussed this before. I don't, they were throwing yeah. garbage at us left and right. And in my own time, I, I mostly read like Anne Rice and Stephen King. And- oh, me too. <laughs> Those were my, that I mean, was yeah, my shit. Me too. Like, I read so much for like a 12 year old, so oh, much vampire erotica. This is, this is, <laughs> all, 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 th- there are several autographed copies of Memnock the Devil, my favorite oh my the Vampire God. Chronicles. I remember reading like it at like eleven, and there's like the like the fish when eat, they the, all have. Well, there's that. There's that for sure. But then there's also these little there's pieces that. like the fish nibble off of the penis of a corpse that's floating in the water, and I was like, "This is info I have now. Great." It, um, <laughs> it really yeah. makes you wonder what Steve. What was I? Mean, I almost said what he was doing. We know what he was doing, but um, I don't okay. know if he was. <laughs> I don't know if he was doing that during it, but we definitely know when he was doing that. Um, yeah. mac- <laughs> maximum overdrive. Okay, sorry. Oh, go God, even more. John, your kids don't listen to the show, do they? The kids. Oh do God, no! Teach? Oh no, 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 no! Oh, not no. No, good, good, good. Good. <laughs> no, 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 for sure not. Um, yeah, I, I hope. Well, maybe they do. I have no idea, honestly. But uh, I doubt it. They're not that interested in me, to be completely honest. Um, <laughs> and, and that's nor, a blessing. And nor I disappear they at at the end of the at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I, I just cease to exist outside of school hours, <laughs> unless I'm unless I need to be emailed at 10 p.m. In which case, I suddenly re reappear into yeah. Into reality. You're like Frank Sinatra, um, and you're like, excuse me, while I disappear, and then you. Just <laughs> exactly it. If, at the end of class, I throw down a smoke bomb and just like that's it. That's so great. They would probably great, love great. that. I would love that. that would be so good. I so okay. So back getting back to getting back to the topic at hand here. I will say that I have one nice thing to say about the Muppet Christmas Carol. Okay, so <laughs> I'm with Alex. Uh, this is not my Muppets. The nineties hashtag we, hashtag not my Muppets. There's a ninety nine Chris uh, Muppet movie we're gonna have to talk about at some point. But like, uh, you know, the Muppets from wait, like, is that the, the one where and, Parliament is in it? It's like the aliens. The Muppets from space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. The yeah. aliens are based on Parliament Funkadelic, by the way. Yes, they oh, are. For, oh, okay, yeah. I need you to know that I pictured Parliament as in the United Kingdom, and I was like. <laughs> And I like suddenly everyone was wearing little wigs, and I was like, oh, went that... in interesting directions. I, yeah. like, I, I saw know. that movie. I saw that movie in the theater. Just, I'm so yeah, sorry. I did too. I did too. Hey, John, you, you, John, you were afraid there weren't that many sci-fi movies in 1999, and you've been sitting <laughs> on this one. And I'm Muppets from Space. Um, it's fine. The Muppet Christmas Carol is fine. It's I what I what I do really love about it, and what I think is this version could have benefited from a little bit more is that the Muppets Christmas Carol's production design I think is spectacular, and I love like it really immerses the sort of like the sort of tone and imagery and like lighting that that Dickens like evokes in the text of this like candle lit very sort of you know like bucolic victorian london and it's a choice i think for this version to do a much more sort of plainly lit stripped down version of it and i think it works for the production but like that's something i yearn for in in dickens adaptations i love the world that the muppet christmas carol takes place in i just don't like the movie that much and Mm -hmm. it's just not my it's just not my Muppets. And like tonally, it just doesn't work for me because like it's it's too jokey and, and it, this is not a jokey story. Like it just it just doesn't hit the right sort of uh, the right sort of notes in terms of all of that. And Alex is completely right. Like this really gets the idea of a guy being haunted and this like redemption arc and really focusing on him and why he is the way he is. And like how Christmas can fix him and like why Christmas can be a wonderful thing that can like remind people that life doesn't always suck. And we can choose one day to just like be happy and nice to each other and like drink at Fezziwigs and all that sort of shit. Like we can just do that. that, Right. And guys, 
when I tell you that I want the next Met Gala theme to be Fezzy Wig's Christmas party, <laughs> I was like, what is this jovial man and yeah. all these yummy food and everyone encouraging everyone to not who cares about our bodies, let's enjoy ourselves. I'm like, yes, Fezzy Wig. Okay, sorry. I'm getting what ahead. You, I, <laughs> what, what do you guys think of, so aside from Patrick Stewart, the actor, what do you guys think of Patrick Stewart as Scrooge? Like, because it's a very different sort of vision of Scrooge, I think. Right? He's a little bit too... Like, he is a lot more... Well, it's like, quite... Robot, it's quite right? act- As a actory. It's quite actory the way it's that very he... very actory. He, the way that he intended it to be, right? It's... Yeah. But it's also, I feel like, coming at it from this angle, I I did... I very much like Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm a big fan. Sure. That's the only Star Trek... <laughs> I watch. Give me more. Q, matters. Put me on mm-hmm. a holodeck. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, number one, do number two is the thing I like to say about William Riker. Um, I was. Brett, in, I was. In, I was. Uh, Q was in front of me in line at a grocery store one time. That's he's my got, story. There you go. I, I love. I love it. So anyway, it's it's, it's very hard, tall. He's it's very hard for man. me to see Patrick Stewart as anything other than than that. Really, not even uh, Professor X. I, but, oh, uh, it's not it's not hard for me. But this. I so, know. but I enjoy it because he's an incredible yeah. actor and he's both uh, <laughs> funny and, you know, quite quite good at being terrified. Yeah. I yeah, I, I thought I thought it was great. I didn't know exactly what to expect and it's weird sometimes like him in green room, it's weird to see him out of you know, a guy that you want to hang out with. And he spends a lot of time not being a guy you want to hang out with in this movie. And I think he does a great job of it. And then also just like his, you know, he's good at being Scrooge the tyrant, but I think he's even better at being like Scrooge, the guy whose foundation is sh- is shaken. Oh yeah. Um, yes. Which is how he spends like the half of the movie right in the middle. And I, um, I think that that's, that's great. I think any, if once you hit a particular age, that's resonant. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's in the, again, in the source material, but I do like, I do. I rather liked how involved he was at yelling at his past self or his, even or yes. yeah, trying yeah. trying to. I do think <laughs> other versions of Scrooge, he was more, uh, he was observing more and taking it in instead of being so caught up in what he was witnessing that he was actively trying to change what was happening yeah. before him. That part when he, they were breaking up, he and his lady, his gal pal, that part made me cry. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. It's so yeah. sad. It's yeah. so sad. And she also, like comes in like yeah. gives gives the you know, she gives him enough to push back on and he doesn't push back. And I've I've been there. So I'm like, uh, oh, you idiot. Why didn't yeah. you do the right thing? And she clearly does not have any um anxious attachment issues that no. I'm aware of because if someone did that to me, the way that I would have collapsed on that bench, oh the way God. that I would have wailed like a banshee. I was like, okay, secure attachment. She's like, okay, got to go. And I, I was saw, like, what? I saw someone, I saw like a meme of a shirt and it was like, if you can't handle me at my worst, please don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll change. Oh, but it's so true. <laughs> Well, oh, the whole the whole thing, the whole thing with her was, I mean, so so Dickens, I mean, the emo, the emo lad that he was, um, had this. He I mean, was, you know, he about was not he was not a good man, but we're not going to get into it. But uh, well, he was just an emo. He was, you know, he's a rock star of 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 his day. Um, uh, Maria Biednell, uh was the first love of his life and he had a relationship with her between the ages of 18 and 21 so like peak emo relationship <laughs> period um and like you see so what happened with her basically was that like her parents didn't approve of him and didn't approve of like her dating a writer and so he like tried to be an actor but he like fell asleep on the day of his audition or something so that didn't work out and so he could like never quite meet her level and um and then after three years he 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 kept trying and trying but like she just sort of walked away from him and then like three years she would have been an old lady by then (laughs) well then decades later they got back in touch and it was like a very weird thing that happened anyway that 18 to 21 love story which is like so formative i'm sure you know we all have we all have stories that 
it, it appears in all of his work. Like it's it's the it's the Estella thing in Great Expectations. It is the uh, the Bell thing in uh, in Christmas Carol. Like it's it's all over the place. It's in David Copperfield. Like it's always God, like so many like, of his he's characters. He's like Ted Bundy. Get over it. I don't. Well, why he didn't you... murder anybody. <laughs> He just wrote about it in like fictional characters, but it's so, yeah, I mean like this is a really important part of, of Dickens stories is like that unrequited lost early love and how that plays into the story. And again, I think it's one of those parts of the story that is, is not often really well handled. I think it's really beautifully done um, in this version in large part because of the way that Scrooge reacts to it. And I think, you know, Alex is absolutely right here that it's like, the 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 way that he patrick stewart like some of his best moments are when he's not talking and he's just kind of mm-hmm. observing what's happening and you can sort of feel right the the ice beginning to crack and, when he's tapping um, his little foot at the fancy wig party yeah <laughs> also i again i don't want to i feel like i'm the person who's not going to let us get deep <laughs> can i tell you the horniest moment in this motion picture of yes course. That's, that's her her name is bell as in mm-hmm. I almost said Gunnis. Get out, Jen. Bell. A bell arrives at this party and he slowly unties the tie of her. So hot. So hot. Of her. Mm-hmm. Of her. And I went, oh. That was a move. <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, okay. In Victorian England, that is like I mean, up it was sassy. <laughs> I, those two had some chemistry. Whoever they are, I did not look them up. Oh, were, yeah. They were both attractive. That's, no, for real. For real. That was, that was, yeah. that was intense. And, I, and then yeah. I thought, were they doing that then? That was practically public sex. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like for Victorian England, that is fucking, that's, that's, that's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. That's over the line. Uh, but, you know, you get away with more stuff on, on Christmas. So It's true. Okay. That's what Christmas is known for. <laughs> um, Where you get away with so, stuff. Get away with stuff. So Richard E. Grant, Bob uh. Cratchit. I never, I never really give a shit about Bob Cratchit in general. Like, I don't really care who plays Bob Cratchit. Um, I fucking love this Bob Cratchit. He's so good. He's so so good. much. Everything they did, the way that they pushed his hair down over his face, he I, I've never seen a more exhausted man. And Richard E. Grant does look exhausted. His resting all the time. His resting it's, face, his default setting is I'm so sleepy. I'm tired. I've been alive for a hundred years. I'm yes. still <laughs> still here after all these years. But, yeah. But like his hair over his face, I was like, oh God, this man is not sleeping. I also I don't want to jump ahead, but I was trying to figure out, do we know? Tiny Tim, do we know him? No. Yes. What? I, I'm confused as to as to what is killing him. I did some light googling, mm. and I thought maybe. Oh, he had, we just we it's did so he have funny rickets? You asked this. It's so funny <laughs> you asked this because we just covered my neighbor uh, Totoro on the show, okay. and the mom on that is just like sick. And the way that the way that our guest Jeannie Finley suggested it was like lady lying down disease or la- lady lying down <laughs> yeah you know she's yeah. just think that it's Gen- like this, gently that's, coughing totally that's exactly what tiny tim has is he's just he's like translucent and yeah. uh that yeah he's and, english it, it's a t- <laughs> it's attached to his being i, I, I don't want to use their word a, per, a person with a disability um no uh, no we're not making fun, but it's not like it's not art- oh it's no not no ever- i'm saying uh, that's the implication and so i started googling what could kill you that begins with like having to use our word being crippled to use what their is word. it i mean i thought it might be rickets rickets <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. yeah it's generally agreed upon that it's it's some kind of kidney disease because apparently that was actually very common in victorian england and the um, leg thing or, is is not an involved that's just a thing that's also it's sort of it's sort of a, a, a side effect, I guess. Okay. So like apparently given all of the various kind of like um, conditions of Victorian London uh, health wise, it was very okay. common for kidney infections to happen to especially young people, um, especially kind of like sickly, right? Young people. And so the idea that like Tim is especially small of stature, um, it's one of those things that I think made immediate sense to any audience at the time <laughs> to like, they, like recognize what was happening there, but it's kind of right. lost its, uh, it's, it's modern, um, it's modern meaning. But I think the idea basically is just to have a, a counterpoint to like, what is the 
effect of like unfettered greedy capitalism represented by Scrooge and like how the people at the bottom like physically suffer and and yes. making Tim the sort of embodiment of that of that physical suffering and like pathos um but yeah I, I think it's sort of one of those things where like like polio I, like something along those lines right where it's just a very common ailment of just like Victorian London. Victorian doll disease, VDD, yeah. VDD. the original VDD. Um, <laughs> and again, I don't want to keep getting into Scrooge, but I guess I'm going to. Sure. The way that they treated their their version of Tiny Tim, I always wept <laughs> openly uh-huh. at this child at his at the reason why he wasn't speaking, and when he does finally speak at the end, <laughs> that was far more moving than anything that Tiny Tim could ever do. I'm sorry, I'm pitting them against each other. That's not what this is, but um, that's all. This I really liked the way podcast. they did it. They were like, he uh-huh. can't speak because he saw his father murdered. Okay, yeah. So sorry. Should we just yeah. stop this and watch what, that well, movie? No, no. <laughs> That's for, I also that's ten years earlier. The I podcast. also don't want to. I don't want to keep derailing you, but I do have all these fun facts that make me feel like we're. Also I don't just... believe that you don't want to keep derailing. No, I, I, you know, you love derailing. <laughs> but just, you also love fun facts. So I'm, it's like a. Fun, I'm not, no, I'm, it's I'm, a fun I'm not on a rail. It's a fun thing to say before derailing. But. Sorry, I have derailed. <laughs> But I just feel like I'm accidentally <laughs> pushing us into like popped up video territory where I was yeah. like, I would, I, I, cause, because again, I thought to myself, you know, there's not much we can talk about, uh, like a well-trodden story. We know this story very well. All of us, we could talk about actors in the production, but what if we talked about the etymology of humbug? <laughs> Let's talk about that for a okay. second. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Um, I have. I didn't read my sources. I can read them at the end. Um, always cite your sources because otherwise you're a monster. Uh, okay, and I quote: Although associated forever more with anti-Christmas cheer, the word humbug was in common parlance long before Dickens wrote his festive novella in 1843, and was meant as a hoax or deceit. That's from History Extra. So it really means, it means hoax bullshit. or deceit. Yeah, it means bullshit. Yeah, this is bullshit. bullshit. Whenever he's saying humbug, he's saying bullshit. <laughs> Christmas yeah. is bullshit. bullshit. I love it. The ba- eh, I used I used to think of it as one word, but ba is not. It's not ba humbug. No, yeah, it's an interjection. Okay, yeah. well, listen. That's what it says on yeah. like the the like um Maybe the mat can... where you wipe your feet, and then it has like a little Christmas hat on it. It's a little joke that you can get at a yeah. home goods. Bullshit. It says well, ba humbug. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell the hobby lobbyists they've been wiping their feet on bullshit every December. Yeah. Lobbyists. That's great. So yeah, it was also uh, it was a favorite of P.T. Barnum. No surprise there. I did know that. Yeah, uh, and of course it appears in the Wonderful Wizard of Oz in its very own chapter, the Magic Art of the Great Humbug. Ooh, that's the great right. Bullshit. That's right. The Great and Terrible Humbug. That's what Dorothy calls him after discovering uh, that he can't, in fact, send her home to Kansas because he's. Just a man, like all of us. Just a man. It doesn't. It doesn't have the bite of bullshit, but it is fun to say. Like it's not as satisfying as saying like that's. I mean, it was bullshit, their version. Um, I know. I guess, I, but I want. I, I want to bring it back, but bullshit is still way more satisfying. It is just it genetically because it feels like bullshit. It's great. Bullshit, and so yeah, I, yeah, I uh, like the like the thing that I do like that this that I think that this does well. Is I think that this is the only time, even though like even though I love I do love Scrooged, but mm-hmm. I I felt I felt like the internal struggle of Scrooge more here than I do in Scrooged, and I think it's probably because like in part like it's like in Scrooge I love how we've turned this into. What, what the, yeah. Scrooge Christmas well? Carol ninety nine versus Scrooge eighty eight. But, but I that, yeah. I relate to that. That's like my those are my sources. And so well, that's sure. like the new English it. version. Scrooge is the new English yeah, version, and sure. this is the King yeah. James version. And I, that's right. And I and I like really. I I think that this is the first time I like related on a human level to the things that he's going through. Meaning, yeah. like you know, his especially now. When so much dialogue um, aided or or aided is not the right word, but like accelerated by social media 
is through kind of like constant self path, uh, pathologization and like finding like specific kinds of traumas and then like defining yourself by those specific. And that's all right. I mean, I, I'm not saying that those aren't the right things or whatever, but like it can become a thing where like you settle into the cycle of like accepting that as your reality or whatever. And this is a guy who's like, Oh, I like never dared do anything because of these specific reasons. And then I let myself settle into that rather than like grow. And that felt like very, it also felt real because my wife pointed out these lyrics to me that our friend Maya DeVitri wrote that I'm about to read that like really <laughs> yes. like fucking did me. It's, there's a song called Baby Elephants that our friend Maya wrote. And, and if okay. no one knows Maya DeVitri, she's like a pretty well known person. She's really great and well worth listening, listening to. But the lyrics are baby elephants get tied to a rope too thick for a baby to break and they're ready when the, and they're ready when it's clear then they've give, when they've given up on ever going away and then they grown up elephants they never test the rope and i was like and like oh, i felt no. that so <laughs> hard on scrooge looking back on himself and that's like the reason why he didn't uh uh protest his girlfriend breaking up with him or his like partner breaking yeah. up with him and that's yep. like his struggle throughout and it's like yeah i'm this way because my dad was a prick and i'm this way because of like this and that but like you still have to grow you know what i mean like or else you're going to like accept the flawed way that you've become for valid reasons and let that stifle you forever yeah i mean he did have this was a clear example, not to pathologize, of aban- he had abandonment issues. Like, yeah. Not the very fun way they've often presented themselves in me. I'm very outward. <laughs> I'm an outward. I w- I, I'm an extrovert with my I'm abandonment a crazy issues. Person. I, I, I absolutely have, have engaged, <laughs> god damn it, engaged in like outwardly crazy behavior, yes. which, and he, his is like, very internalized and yes, very, yes. very buttoned up his abandonment issues, but they're there because they mm-hmm. present themselves as resentment. And what I did find interesting, and I guess I never knew, and maybe now I, only because I'm in therapy, did I notice this is that he ended up perpetuating the generational trauma with his own nephew, whose mother, his sister died in childbirth, the way that his mother died in childbirth, giving mm-hmm. birth to him. And instead of doing that very cool thing of recognizing that, Hey, we are in the same boat and it really sucks when you're being blamed for this thing. You have no, you, you were clearly not at fault for, I'm still going to resent you for killing my sister. Yeah, just like my totally. mother resented me for killing my mother. I'm passing that- it right to you, uh, McNulty from, oh, from the wire. I'm in Baltimore right now. I mean, I actually, yeah. I actually screamed the affair. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. That's and true. then yeah. the crown. Oh <laughs> so, my God. Yeah. The yeah. other, I want, I just want to, I want to round out the, the lines, the last lines of that part oh, of the I'm elephant sorry. thing. Oh, no, 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 no. It's yeah. not your fault. I, I ended it. It's not you. But the, but this really spoke to like where he go, where sort of like his journey is. Imagine living with seven tons of strength you've never known. Imagine living with the strength that you've never known. And like, that's what he is haunted by and like has to like realize that like there is, he thinks his strength is shutting out the world and I've been there and you, all you're doing is like to, to your points, Jen, you're in, you're internalizing and then kind of like passing on your own flavor of, um, um, of, of how you've been wounded yeah. <laughs> for someone else to have to deal with. And he's, this is like about, and I've talked about this with, with my co-host Sarah a bunch of times in the past is like generational trauma is a haunting. It's a, it, it, it is a, and you need an intervention or something close to an exorcist in order to get in front of it. So that like, at the very least you can traumatize the future generation with your own special flourish. Yeah. <laughs> don't you, you don't, you said you didn't want to be like your parents. So give them a different flavor. Yeah. So you're going to fuck them up some way. Do it your do own it, way. Uh, do it your own way. I mean, I do think obviously the only reason why anyone breaks generational trauma nowadays is because we live in the kind of times that allow that to happen. But sure. like, obviously, you know, the the whole they did their best thing. I always I remember discarding as a child because I was like, this is your best. <laughs> <laughs> I would love I sit, I'm like, have a seat. Um, <laughs> not that we're now we're getting into other things. But yeah, I mean, also, he is a product of his time as well. And the only way he could break his own is by having three therapists and I guess four 
counting Marley. I mean, I do want to get into these ghosts <laughs> because pff, the outfit of the ghost stickers was best. I got to tell you, I got to. That queen, when he stepped forward out of the light, I went, who is she? Yeah. <laughs> that outfit. And can we talk about that as a choice? I didn't. He's unrecognizable to me. I, I I looked at him and I went, "Wasn't he a bad guy in Buffy?" I'm, you know, I'm not great yes, at he like, was. notable he was. notable character actor work, but I will bring you an episode of Buffy if you need it. Um, he was a bad two. guy in Buffy, and he's mm-hmm. Jennifer Grey's dad. Those were his two things. Wait, IRL. Like he's Jennifer Grey's father. Yeah, it's Jennifer Grey's dad. It's Joel Grey, Jennifer Grey's father. <laughs> uh, did you know this, Alex? No, I don't know. Oh, you don't I don't see know my Michelle. Jennifer Grey's lineage. You don't. <laughs> that's her generational trauma. <laughs> uh, you don't seem shocked that he. She must look like her mother. <laughs> I don't know what, one of my, my. I'm trying to place body um, parts. Yeah, she looks <laughs> like him. That's for sure. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay, so she's the nepo baby. This is how I find out. Damn. She is a bit of a nepo baby. That's okay. Yep. She's a great actor. We'll we'll allow it. We love her. Yeah. 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 He was um, he was no, spectacular. He's, he's great. Um, yeah, it's a very sort of physical performance and you know and he's that's what he's kind of known for um he's great he's I, from I, cleveland yeah. yeah is he the only american that's wild actor that to me is the shocking he's, piece is he's from cleveland yeah i can't think of another american in it i think he might i be wonder the why they and i can't remember if he had a british accent now but i'm sure he must have but like he looks like an old mouse <laughs> he does <laughs> That's kind of his vibe. Yeah. yeah old mouth. Right. He looks like a dancing mouse. He looks, he looks like he great. needs to escape from Nim. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I just saw, well, I, that's where I just saw, I just watched The Player the other day. He's in The Player very quickly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. Great. Um, he, I, I'm sure he must have done a bunch of West End stuff, which is, you know, sort of, I think, why he yeah. winds up in this cast. Um, he's a big stage actor, uh, you know, had been for a long time. Oh, he's still alive, 91 years old. Did they 91. go? That's so crazy. Oh God. Did they yeah. ever go as far back into his past, or I'm assuming the book does? I don't recall, <laughs> again, from Scrooge, I don't recall them going to his childhood. I thought it sort of picked up with his youth already working with at Fezziwigs. I don't recall their them dipping far back into his childhood and letting no, they us, do. You know. It's but it's 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 brief. Um yeah. No, they 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 do. But yeah, it's it's uh, I'm trying to remember like how much time is actually spent on on that scene. The the bulk of it is the Fezziwig scene, right? And it's like the teenage version of Scrooge that is that that really matters. But um, there's the whole thing of like his sister. Yes, uh, and is she and, his half? I assume she's his half sister. Has to be obviously because mom died in childhood. Right. Look at me. Right. I got. I'm sorry. I'm actually doing a family tree over here. So I just want to. <laughs> I want to get these facts. I, I want to get these. Right. Like, do we know what what time of day he was born? We're doing like a birth chart. No, well, yeah. I actually did some math. Did I write it down? I when and I was Fred like, Fred is her son. And yes, McNulty. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I I did some quick math and I I deduced. <laughs> That it was probably 1793 or thereabouts, and when he went all the way back as a child, because Patrick Stewart was 59 when he films this, looks great. Uh, the story takes place in 1843. I'll just say that, and he's probably nine years old. So I was like, okay, we're so we're in like 1793 again. This is for wow. my tree. This is for my tree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everyone has pox. <laughs> Seems on bad. all on all their houses. <laughs> so true. By the way, at the Fezziwig party, speaking of when that when the children came down the stairs and that child's wig was revealed to me. Do you guys Yeah. The little yeah. boy had this incredible mm-hmm. like I was like, okay, the past wasn't that bad. Let's <laughs> Let's <laughs> bring cool like part. little Victorian w- wigged children back. <laughs> Victorian Christmas parties seem pretty legit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um before I want to just kind of backtrack a little bit because I just I do want to talk very quickly about about Fred. Um, <laughs> so like I, Fred is one of those characters again who can like really needs to be great, but sometimes it's kind of overlooked. He's very funny in the text as well because he's so sort of enthusiastic. And the way that <laughs> the way that he plays Fred, and I love what I love about him as an actor is like he can be 
Like he can go from like smoldering dark smoke show to like complete fucking prissy dork. Yeah, so, he looks like a, yeah, totally. So beautifully, I like. <laughs> I don't know how he does that, but like I see him in this and like as Charles in the crown and I'm like, I don't like this also feels really natural to you, even though the whole like McNulty sort of, you know, scary badass dude is it seems also like a default setting to you. But like he's great. And the way they flesh out the Fred character uh, in this and it's one of my favorite moments, too, is like also from the text, which is when Fred is giving that speech about why Christmas is great. And then, like, Bob Cratchit applauds, <laughs> which is taken directly from Dickens. Like, he starts going like this. Like, he stands up and applauds. And then Scrooge gets all pissed off. And the way that that's played in this version is so great. And it's one of those ones that also is kind of, like, overlooked, I think, in a lot of adaptations. But now, who are Dominic all, West is who are all so these people at this party? I mean, they're... His, his party at the end? It's obviously his wife. Well, no. Well, we see it in the Christmas present, and, and I assume I, is, is a hallucination yeah. or not but like some dude i mean on some other girl yeah that that was that that felt weird <laughs> that was very yeah, weird the kiss a little little and little it was very stuff. sassy i, I also I mean, was like what is do i care about these people like <laughs> yeah why are we so- i was like did, did i miss some backstory like this <laughs> why is not? leading they're leading up to this like no yeah. it was like they're, like, they're playing a, they're playing a, a game i just want to set the scene they're playing a game <laughs> Where someone puts has a mask put on them, yes, and they Why men feel fuck? the guy yes. feels the woman's face in yep. her nose, and yep. she's talking to him, yeah, like That's which true. is enough of a giveaway because kind of it's her voice, yeah. mm-hmm. and he's touching her, and he has to identify her based on that, and then they look up and realize they're under the mistletoe and their kiss is a long ass time. Like, it's not like a like mistletoe kiss. It's like they, it, they kiss. I, I guess this That's had, true. I guess this could, by the way, I looked up other Victorian blindfold games and there are. Um, <laughs> oh, good news. What the fuck else are you going to do? You got like, <laughs> there are several, there are several. There's flag one, football. There's one called the extinguisher Victorian where London? they, no they, they clear the room. They, they arrange the guests on either side of the room. A candle's lit. This seems already, this is a recipe for disaster, but okay. Okay. Everything was flammable back then, but let's play with them. They like, put live candles on their Christmas trees at this time. Let's I not know. like, you know. I anyway. cannot believe, thanks to you, I was just able to Google Victorian blindfold games. They, and, and there is a whole category. It, it's, they're going to come up for you. What else are they going to do? But, you know, what this party feels like, it feels like the younger generation re- probably rebelling against... Like this is more or less because I have to assume even though they f- they feel like adults because they're in this big fancy house and they're all wearing their sh- sassy outfits, he's probably like twenty or something ridiculous. Yeah. So this is like a party filled <laughs> with like the youth. They're the next generation. Our parents probably yeah. wouldn't open. They're like the make they're out. like the New York like early nineties party. They're things. the bright young things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean that yes. kind of is true. They're the club kids. Kind of they're the, one of the <laughs> game <laughs> monsters. I'm not even gonna say yeah. Like it's, they're the Michael Ailings of their time. R.I.P. I just went R.I.P. All right. <laughs> Died on Christmas, 2021. <gasps> um, uh, I just want to say one of the names of these party games, I'm sure you've come across it, uh, Jen, is Hot Cockles. And I'm not even going to say what it is because it's better in your imagination. <laughs> no need. <laughs> Fill in Hot those. Cockles. Again, when the Met Gala does these, <laughs> does this theme... All of this will be there. Every single inch of it. I'm going to a wedding on Monday, and I'm going to bring some of these games. games. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be like, let's I, play. I really Hot think. I really think. Well, I really think you should. Someone should try the blind, blind man's bluff. I mean, we've all next heard time it. some boomer talks about like young people with their smartphones, and be like, would you rather they're playing hot cockles? <laughs> what do you What do you want? <laughs> would you rather? What do you want? Feel Were things better nose? in your day, boomer? <laughs> Tory in London. <laughs> oh, these are great. Quite a bunch Parlor of hot games. Knocks. <sighs> so yeah. So anyway, yes. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so the other thing is so like Ghost of Christmas Present, uh, pretty standard. Get a guy with a beard, uh, big sort of booming guy. He's yes. fine. You know, it's Father Christmas. So I, whatever. I, I did um, like the scene where they were brought to various places in the world while everybody was singing Silent Night. Was that it? And we were meant that to That is also like the whole so the 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 lighthouse is another thing from the book that is just a really sort of random little flourish that is always cut. 
from Every Christmas Carol, and they used it here, which I thought was really cool. Uh-huh. So like, yeah, the whole thing of like uh, the sort of um, the sort of uh, voyage around the sea and and the sailors and the lighthouse and all that stuff. Yeah, that's. I uh, really, I really liked it, and I also, <laughs> I know exactly why this, what this line meant, but it did make me laugh when. Um, Scrooge is like, and again, I'm just going to use their language. When Scrooge says, when they get to Richard E. Grant's, when they get to, uh, is it Bob Cratchit? He's like, I didn't know mm-hmm. Cratchit had a crippled son. And 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 then uh, the ghost was like, why didn't you ask? I mean, why would he ask that? Hey, man. Yeah, hey, Bob. So any, This is going to be kids? like totally on a left <laughs> I love field. That too. <laughs> totally on a left field. But do you have any... Now, I'm sure the, the yeah. real question is, ask him anything. I know yeah, what they were. Yeah, do you were, know any? I know what is, they were saying. That is the real question. Ask you him never asked. Any question. But it is quite hilarious yeah. to think that literally, like, you just have to go down the list of possibilities. When until... exactly in counting money does that come up as, like, a topic of conversation, right? Like, Oh, my God. Four it's... shillings, five shillings. So do you have any uh, crippled kids? What's Fox? your son's deal? Someone... <laughs> yeah, what's your son's deal? <laughs> so your son's tweet. got a little cane. What's that there all about? There was a tweet. There was a tweet the Fucking other day where it was like... It was like the parenthetical on a first date, knowing women like it when you ask questions about them and parenthetical, what the hell's wrong with you? And I like, <laughs> <laughs> that's how he gets to find out about Tiny Tim. <laughs> See, this is why Twitter.com can, should, can't really die. Either. Can't die. It's going to keep going. I won't let it. There was also recently that girl who was like, I don't like small talk. And then went on to describe small talk and how she yeah. likes it. But then I was like, did you see that tweet? Oh, yeah. I engaged did you. Come across like, that? Like did you really? Done. Yeah. Guys. So that one... I, was, I like, love small talk. I love. It I bet so you're much. fun on dates. Well, I want I really. Like, <laughs> the more the more people that like me, strangers, people that I know, the fucking better. Like you think I and I and I don't just do it to like be a weirdo people pleaser. I genuinely like to make people have some joy, try to make them laugh because they're probably being treated yeah. like shit most of the time. Yeah. Like if you're a server or you're just a. But boy, oh boy, nothing gets my little synapses firing more than small talk. <laughs> If you're a random person, like my favorite two favorite types of talk are small and none. Like those so are my two that's types. The, that's the, like, I have been, I know what she thinks she was saying. And I, I have <laughs> certainly been, and I have certainly been a 20 something <laughs> who thinks that I have very important things to say. <laughs> and like, and like, we should just get right into them. <sighs> and I, the more I talk to people, the less I want to get into it. Like I, I just like, and it's usually when people think that they're like telling the truth or whatever, it's very burdensome. Like, I don't want you to get your fucking giant personality all over mm. me. I just want like, <laughs> just let's talk about shirt. Set it on shirt. Show. Alex, <laughs> get your giant personality off of me. If that's, yeah. I will purchase that. <laughs> <laughs> um, T public, and I guess I'll have to buy thirty of them or whatever because you can't just get one T shirt made. God forbid. <laughs> but please, God, make that. Yeah, I, you know this goes hand in hand. I have to assume, and we're gonna get back to this movie with we like are. I can't like the youth of today acting as if they are frightened of a phone call. Stop fucking saying you, you are frightened of a phone call. <laughs> You little weirdos. Like I mean, I'm uh, genuinely frightened of phone calls. I'm not. I mean, I just don't answer. But when like well, that's when someone, I mean. when someone says to me, it. hey, let's hop on a call instead of breaking oh, yeah. your hands for 45 minutes typing things out. Yes. I'm like, yeah, I'd love to just do a five minute call instead of three yeah. hours of text back and oh, forth. Oh, I had a, I, I for 10 years had a commercial video production company and getting anyone who was younger than me to just like call a client. Call. call the client. No, like this happened with me like and Jen impossible. like two weeks ago. She was like, "Can I just call you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, let's just let's I'm much sorry, easier." I will. Like, I yeah. will not do it. I won't. Like before. No, I, I'm. I wish more people would. I'm no. like at a certain point in the text. I'm like, I don't um, want to write anymore. Let's I'm just not, fucking have. I'm not going to read the, into your fucking language and your words yeah. and pick out emotions that make you're not worth it. 
<laughs> well, I'm just no. not gonna, I'm gonna drive myself. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the worst place, even with all the therapy inside of me. On occasion, I'm still gonna go to the worst place. It's just so a discretion me... thing. Like if if you have one thing to say to me, send me a text. Send me Don't a text. fucking call me. <laughs> and that's another shirt. If you have one thing to say to me, <laughs> to say. send me a text. Let's do it. Guys, through text. we're getting a lot of merch out of this, and <laughs> one of it has to we do are. with a Christmas Carol. Write let's, all these down. <laughs> let's get back into it. I have. Okay. So can I can I bring the can I can we talk about that? I don't mean to jump, but this is yeah. such an important thing. Sure. The end. Okay. Yeah. We have a great we have a great and it's perfect because like Patrick Stewart, you just want to be friends with him and give him a hug when he's being Patrick Stewart. Yes. And he and he does such a good job when he turns and like I like how like this is this is a thing that happens in all of these is like it's such an abrupt turn that everyone thinks he's crazy. So like that's fun. I like that he does that really well. But can we just talk about what's going on in your head where you know that you've been a prick for your whole life and yeah. people are scared of you and it's your choice to pretend <laughs> to still be a prick to your employee as a means of having <laughs> a big fun review. You mean his episode of Punked? Totally. And like yeah. his, in Cratchit, his, Cratchit, it would have been a great gritty reboot if Cratchit beat him to death with the fire I poker, mean. which is what he pulls out because he's scared of him. But like yeah. I like his commitment to being the worst version of himself so that he can reveal that he's going to just give him a raise is great. I know. <laughs> well, that's what makes this like, again, this is what makes this an, uh, more than just a classic story. Like it's a great, it's a great work of fiction because of those kinds of um, commitment to like, not just the character being kind of a trope. Right. And again, like what I was saying earlier is that I feel like a lot of Christmas Carol adaptations fall far too far into the, these characters as tropes as kind of, um, as kind of like archetypes at this point, and you kind of lose the humanity of the story and that this really brings it back. A moment for me that I loved because, again, it's sort of almost like it's often played that the the transformation like fully changes who Scrooge is fundamentally. Mm. What I loved about this version is this is one little moment where he's like talking to the kid in the street, yeah. right? Who he tells to buy the duck. And I can't and by the exactly. Way, he's the best one in the movie, that kid. The best he's one. He's awesome. But there's this one moment where I can't remember exactly what he says, but he makes some some comment about like the cost of something. Like there's this moment where he just is like, he's Scrooge. Like he's still that guy. He still basically has the well, same basic understanding yeah. of like. It's a journey the world being kind of dumb but like he's kind of over it and so it's not as though he's completely transformed like there's this moment that patrick stewart gives where you still see that there fundamentally is this character and you know why he was the way he was before those elements are still there he's just choosing to be a better person now yeah. and i like that because it doesn't like it's all too often the transformation of scrooge is just like it's a miracle. It's yeah, magical. I love a gradual, it. like it's still rooted in the character. Mm -hmm. I think that that's like yep. so important. Um, and I do like that. Well, and I like similarly the interaction he has right after that, where the shop guy comes with the giant, <laughs> the giant bird. And yeah. he's like, bring this to the Cratchits. And the guy's like, bring it to the Cratchits. And he's like, oh, you'll need a taxi. And he gives him, <laughs> and he gives him the, the money. Cab. And the guy's like smiles. Yes. He's like, thank God I don't have to walk this down. Like he just doesn't understand how, how things work. No. Because right. Right. he's right. Not. Yeah. right. Because he's right. skin flint or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's also he's skin flinty. He also appears to he's he's walking everywhere, right? He's like, I don't know where anything is. Um, I do want to talk about I can't believe neither of you, every time you both opened your mouth as a mouth about this scene, I thought for sure you were gonna talk about his unhinged laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never in my life. I was like, "What's he doing? What's he doing? What's laugh. he doing?" It was like a. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. The, it was <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, like but it am. came out because it was like yeah. it was like. Oh, I haven't done this in forty or forty <laughs> or so years, and it was like. Huh, huh. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I was like, yeah. "What's happening? What's happening? What's happening?" And then it happened. And also, when he sends the little red-haired boy to. um is it the Cratchits? I keep getting them and Fred yeah. mixed up. Okay. He sends him yeah. to 24 Camden Road in Camden Town. Mm -hmm. And I looked that up on Google Maps. And it's currently a vape shop called Vapella. 
<laughs> How about that? <laughs> um, I also, yes, and the whole scene, I found it very funny, the whole scene where he's like crazily walking through town being like, hello, Merry Christmas, blah, blah, blah. And they're all like, what the fuck is wrong with this they're dude? Like, this is and, scary. Or, yeah. <laughs> No. And also, kind of like, I feel like oh, everyone we'll should it. be at church. I feel like everyone should be at church. The fact that no one's at church is making me question. Nobody what? went to Jen, but this is the thing. Like this, nobody wrong? fucking gives a shit about church. Like yeah, no. all of all of the people who would be at church were sent to America, and they started a cult. That's <laughs> and what happened? Alex is one hundred percent correct. <laughs> yeah. They were this like, all exactly of you right. people who take this too seriously, you need to go to the Big Island across the water. Yes, yes, Dickens. <laughs> Dickens with this story um, really gave birth to like the modern English Christmas, and the English Christmas has he's the man who saved Christmas. Is what he's well, the man who invented Christmas, invented Christmas and that's sorry. and that, that really is like it's not an overstatement. And like English Christmas is very cultural and very secular, and like sometimes you go to church, but like the church part is still very sort of like cultural. Like it's not it's not a religious holiday. Christmas. Yeah by and large, has not historically been a religious holiday. Um, it is a very secular holiday. And and it is... Dickens himself was very sort of skeptical of organized Christianity. Um, he, was, he was a very sort of committed Christian. He flirted with Unitarianism at one point in his life. And like someone basically was like, yeah, he's Unitarian. Um, but he, he criticized the Catholic Church a lot. He criticized Protestantism a lot. He, he liked sort of English high church Anglicanism, but like he just didn't like churchiness he didn't like the organizational stuff he didn't like the doctrinaire stuff he was like be good to each other and like you know buy each other's turkeys on christmas and and drink and be festive kind mm. of kind of christian so like th the fact that this is not that church doesn't play into the story is by very much by design and it, and it very much also sort of um re-established that christmas is not really a churchy holiday and it really kind of never has been it, it, for, it, for most of english history it was a drunken brawl of a holiday like it was people like santa con is way more what <laughs> christmas is. Was like in medieval europe no and i mean that very seriously like it's a much yeah. more authentic version of what christmas had been historically until dickens kind of made it a family affair and and um but yeah church doesn't well then matter. he didn't he ruined it then because it seems like it was a lot cooler before he got his little mitts into it. It wasn't really. It was like, I mean, it wasn't cool in the same way that like going out on New Year's Eve in New York City is like not fun. It, no, like, it's, but we don't all like, live in New York City. Stay. We live no. in other places. <laughs> That's what everywhere was like all the time right. on Christmas. It was just like carousing and drinking and fighting and gambling. And but do you, do you guys like, I mean, I love Christmas and I also love Halloween. Oh, yeah. A lot oh, of people yeah, don't it. think these yes. two things can exist. Oh, no, they I are the love, two spooky I love, holidays. I love like, Halloween. Love Christmas, cr spooky Christmas is also like really important to me as well as like an English person because uh, the ghost stories are, you know, are, are a big part of, of the English I mean, we Christmas didn't tradition. really talk about Marley. We kind of zipped over him a little bit. There were a yeah. couple of things from that scene. First of all, I there was this was the first time when I looked at his chains and were, and I thought that they looked like an umbilical cord. I went, oh, is, this is what this is supposed to be, I guess. It's weird. Thought, it did feel yeah. like that to me. An and I had choice. And I had never seen or or any version of when he steps outside and there's all these other spirits. And my first thought was like, Oh, Beetlejuice. Like when they go yeah. and they <laughs> flip open the, that's directly from the text as well, which from, is often from the overlooked. Beetlejuice text. Yeah. Yes. And no, from the, yes, from the Beetlejuice text from the original. And my, Beetlejuice. my favorite thing that Jacob Marley says is, and I felt this too. He's like, I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. And I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> hard to feel you, Jacob Marley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then these are just all my little notes. Some of them are little jokies. What Patrick Stewart says about the three goes, couldn't I just take them all at once and have it over and done with? And I said, what are things you say at an orgy? <laughs> <laughs> and basically he gets his wish too, which is weird. The ghosts are like, all right, fine. We'll do it all in one night. Because at the end he's like, they did it all in one night. Hooray. What was, like, what was the thing that like, I, I feel like this must have been straight from the text and I and I don't I'm terrible at remembering things, but someone says something about Scrooge at like the uh you know, out of his earshot or maybe within his earshot because he's eavesdropping on everything. And he says they say something along the lines of like, um, 
um, men who know the littlest speak the broadest or something along those lines. And I was like, yeah, that's like a grand line that I should write down and then forgot to immediately. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm speaking broadly about it. Uh Yeah, there are a a lot of wonderful lines. So I mean, there I wasn't kidding when I said uh, every once in a while, my brain went, oh, this language, these words are being put together in a way that I'm not used to. And my brain is needs a second to catch up with what we're saying. It's like Shakespeare. Was that from the original John? Do you know? Was the whole thing from the original? All of it? Because sometimes they were speaking quite plainly. And then other times I go, oh, we're somewhere else. I don't, I'm lost. That's what it's like to read the text. It's it's there's a lot of plain speak and then there's like weird Victorian slang and you're like, what does this mean? Like and it's all of it's like, you know, met like different words for the way they punish poor people. <laughs> and like, you know, oh. all that sort of shit. You gotta kind of look it up um as you as you go along. But yeah, generally speaking, there's a lot of very familiar modern modern lingo in yeah. it, which is which is sort of what makes he it said a really it's fascinating. Read. At one point, and I remember thinking to myself, well, were we using contractions back then? Oh yes. Yeah. And not um, tis. Yeah, and I will say one thing that really frightened me in the Marley scene was when his mouth opened up. He briefly he was fussing with his very confusing chin strap thingy, and then there was the mouth. Yeah, oh, and I went, "Oh, this is legitimately frightening." Okay, yay! And that this also is-, is directly from the text. And like most most adaptations, like to use that because it's a fun little sight. What is the point of that? Like, is that supposed to be a representation of something? Like, you talked too much in life? Because I guess I'd be I- getting that as well. I don't know exactly, but like it, his his jaw is tied up in uh in 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 the like it's tied maybe around he was his in, head. Maybe he went through a saw trap. <laughs> that's that's it. It's a prequel to Saw. <laughs> then he has to be he had to be yeah. strapped together. The prequel <laughs> to a Christmas Carol is actually the first Saw movie. It's it's exactly seen right. <laughs> no, but also like one thing that no no version ever does, and I guess it's kind of hard to to visually do it, is that in in the story, um, Marley's chains are all sort of like the iconography of banking. So there's mm-hmm. like there's like you know like safe locks and like you know like gold coins and that sort of like make up his chains. So his chains are actually like the the. Um, the, the trappings of like capitalist greed, um, which I guess is there's a reason why people don't want to like double down on that. Well, now his chains are made out of Bitcoin. So <laughs> yeah, today in the modern version, now his chain is the uh, algorithm. Oh, you well, take that, just do- Doge coins. <laughs> I was just going to ask you guys if you wanted to do a 2023 casting really quick, like who would you like to see? And and I was just going to say Scrooge and the ghost. So we don't have to go through everybody. In the show. I do hold that thought. I want to come back to that in sure. a second, but I have one more thing I want to say about this, about this production. So like, so the one thing to me that always like makes or breaks a Christmas Carol adaptation to me is like how fucking cool and scary is the ghost of Christmas future. Now I have to say that in this version, no. The Ghost of Christmas Future was very weird, goofy. but like not, but ki- and kind of goofy. But I also grew to kind of love it, like because it's really f- fucked up in like a in like a goofy way. It's like with like the glowing eyes and just like the weird sort of framing of it's like it's the boxy. I don't know. It's it, it's it's a weird thing. It's not it's straight out of a not, Bonnie Tyler video. So that's good. <laughs> It's not scary the way I want it to be. Like I want people to go all in with the with the with the like gore and and fear of the Ghost of Christmas Future, and this doesn't do that, which I think is consistent with like what they're going for. But like, with, like, it, but like play. symbolically, I think it is best, right? Because like yeah. the future is scary in that it's a shrouded thing that you know is coming, but you don't know any of the details. Yeah. So like, as far as like the, but I like the go. I love. Give me. Give me gnarly, like give me a yeah. give me something that's like messy and and like Cronenberg esque. But I like um I like it. I like what they I like what they accomplished with it with regards I, to like what the future actually is. I grew to like it for those exact reasons. I just I'm always like I want to be like immediately really put off by by that ghost, and it was it wasn't it wasn't that, but it was very like eerie and creepy, and and it it worked, but. Yeah. I, again, it's one of those things where, like, I want to see this exact version with this exact script and this exact cast with a slightly more, well, let's just say, like, bigger budget than, like, a TNT TV movie, right? Sure. Which is, like, 
And again, I think like the way that they kind of did it as a stage play worked really well, well and that's what they were going for. But I, I would love just to see like if this was a little bit more fantastic and a little bit more, you know, like spooky, all in Victorian Christmassy, then it would be absolutely the best version of it I'd ever seen, like yes. by by a mile. Um, but it's great. It's great. Um, all the same. Uh, I watched it, by the way, on the TNT app. If you have cable and have <laughs> TNT, um, you can get the TNT app and it's on there for free. Are they sponsoring this an episode? Uh, no, I'm just, I tried to find okay. ways of watching it like without paying. And I was like, oh, the TNT app might actually have it. And it did in like an HD transfer and it was really nice. Um, wow. Let's, let's real quick then uh, close this out. With with mm. what with, with Jen, your your ideal casting. All right, yes. cast a modern version of a Christmas Carol. Who you uh, got? I've got Michael Sheen for Scrooge. Wow, I've Love got it. I've got Perfect. his best friend David Tennant for the Christmas Past. <laughs> I've got not, I don't know how to say this man's name out loud. I've only seen and written. So apologies, apologies, Nonzo Anosi for Christmas Present. Perfect. Okay, and. Benedict Cumberbatch for the Ghost of Christmas Future. Oh, I love it's it! It's amazing. It already it. looks skeletal. God bless. God bless. They just put him in a little shroud. Um, I don't have. I haven't thought about this, but I, I think know, I'm sorry. pretty sure that at least with regard to the way like Hollywood works, I understand this wasn't a Hollywood production, but I I think like Timothy Chalamet has to be in everything now. Like he has to. It's just required, especially if it's a property <laughs> that we all know about. So he'd have to be something, probably Tiny Tim, based on his Bob Cratchit. Be a, Tiny, no, Bob Cratchit is too old for Tiny, Tiny Tim. Timothy <laughs> Chalamet. Tiny Timothy Chalamet. Tiny yeah. Timothy Chalamet, exactly. Yeah, Bob Cratchit. I think he could do a Bob Cratchit for sure. Um, I don't. Um, I would love to see what's that. The um, gosh, I should know this because of the wrestling piece. What's the the wrestler who is in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? Oh, Dave, oh, Dave Batista. Batista. I'd like to see him as one of the ghosts. I think that that would be <laughs> Love really it. great. He could be Christmas present because that guy's present. like big. Tiny, yeah, ab- tiny, absolutely. Tiny. I would love yeah. that. I'd like to see Doug Jones, uh, the, the oh, creepy, yes. creepy character man, maybe as the future. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and I don't love know. It. I don't know who I would make Scrooge. Who Who are your picks, John? So I know having now seen Richard E. Grant as Cratchit, I'd love to see Richard E. Grant as Scrooge. He'd great. be a great Scrooge yeah. now. At this He's the face for life. it. He does. Um, and then, does. like, Andy Serkis is all the ghosts. Ooh, in, perfect. In yes. You know? Let's, let's, let's do that. I think Andy Serkis actually was in, in the weird, like, very long, recent um, uh, Guy Pierce version. I think Andy Serkis. Oh, I forgot about that. Weird. Played the ghosts. I also forgot that, about the but... Jim Carrey weird uh, one. Anyway. Yeah, it's not good. Oh, anyway. Yeah. It's not good. No, anyway. Thank you. Um, anyways. All right. Well, this was a really great Christmas Carol. Go see this uh, and don't watch The Muppet One. Just like give The Muppet One a, a year off. I know you all love The Muppet Christmas Carol, but like stop. Watching. Yeah, this is great. This is fun. It, they really they good. categorize it as like drama and comedy. And I, we haven't even talked about the fact that like some of it just hits. Like some of it is like it's not at all laugh out loud funny, but like no, there are some funny. funny pieces. Very funny. Yeah. I agree. And we're doing this as part of our horror round and like this is a horror movie. So it's one of the one of the first horror stories really in, in the Western canon. Um, but it really is like it's a horror story. And, you know, it's a story about a guy who's horrified into being a good person uh, and then buys a bunch of turkeys for poor families. It is actually the same. It's all this. I joked about Saw, but it's all the same beats. Like it's the, <laughs> the ghosts are John Kramer. And they're yeah. trying to like convince you to like be good for once. Okay. It's it's saw <laughs> if saw made sense uh, as a as a basic as a as a premise. Um, yeah. Anyways. Uh, Merry Christmas, you guys! Thanks for Merry Christmas. Thanks, thanks, happy thanks holidays. For doing this. Um, and, happy Christmas, uh, as they would say. Yeah, happy Christmas. I can't. I, I, I'm English, and I still can't say Happy Christmas. Ha- oh. Christmas is merry. It is not happy. Merry is a very specific. It's a very sp- uh, specific kind of vibe. It is not, you know, it's not the same thing. Not the same thing as happy. Um, Alex, thanks for stopping by again. Thank nice you. See you. Nice to have a lovely, meet you. Nice to meet you. Christmas Love to see day. you all again. Anytime. Yes. anytime. Um, uh, and Merry Christmas to you all, uh, or happy whatever it is you celebrate. Enjoy the winter. Uh, enjoy the shortest day of the year. Look out for frogs. And thanks, you guys. Are ringing out 
for Christmas Day.